last night and you have like 100 photos and you, all of them are the same, you can now copy all of those settings, that saturation, your exposure, your sharpness, your noise reduction, your lens correction, just by going to copy settings, select all the photos that you want, Oh, it will ask you which settings did you want to copy because maybe you don't want to copy if they've been cropped because you, you had cropped a specific area or maybe there's some other setting. Typically what they have um, will be right. They, uh, Lightroom doesn't, it allows you to select those if you really want, but I mean, it, it will say what's right. And then you select all the photos you want and you paste those, all right? Do other programs do this? Absolutely, all right? Can you batch process them in Photoshop? Yes, you can. Can you use Adobe, I mean, Apple Aperture and do the same thing? Yes, um, th but Lightroom, Aperture, those programs are set up for selecting a bunch and easily, bam, all those get changed, okay? Um, and they're, they're keyboard shortcuts. Everyone, most people are familiar with the the copy and paste functions, all you have to do is add a shift in these programs and it copies the settings and add the shift and it pastes the settings. So like control shift copy C gets you the settings. All right. There's many, many more features. I didn't even go through cropping or selective editing. There's mapping, there's publishing, all of that. But I just wanted you to get an idea of when you get a photo in, probably should lens correct it, should get some noise reduction on it, change your exposure, change your white balance, add a little bit on the highlights or like shadows, and, and see what you have, maybe a bit of sharpening. I mean, looking at the stars, it is very interesting because it's harder to figure out the, the actual colors for it. But if you have a good exposure of the Milky Way, it will bring out, like, you will notice as you're swinging that slider to be like, oh, no, that is not looking right versus um, a lot of, yeah, too warm on the Milky Way looks bad. Um, getting colder, cooler is better. Sure. Features left. HDR, high dynamic range. I'm including this because most of the new cameras even have this built in. All right. Um, what it is, so this is an HDR image of Bryce Canyon. What you're doing is attempting to emulate the full range that the eye sees. Unfortunately, still cameras, um, <coughs> especially for shadows or for highlights, um, if you take a picture and there's something bright, your eyes can still see what that is. But the camera often just becomes a nice big bright white spot, or the dark spots are just black, all right? So what you do is that you take multiple photos they have to be the same photo. We're talking about on a tripod, or we're talking like some of these have a quick click, 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 and then it does it automatically. In fact, any iPhones or the newer Androids all have that built in now that does it. But you change the shutter speed, not your aperture. And why don't we change the aperture to change the exposure? <coughs> the answer is because aperture changes your what's in focus and what's not, all right? Shutter speed does not do that. Now, if you get things flying through, that's a problem. But you combine them in Photoshop or another dedicated HDR app. And what they do, Lightroom? Lightroom doesn't have it. I was looking through it, no. Um, and it brings out, so basically, if there's a bright spot, you want a darker exposure on that. So if you took five frames, a really bright frame, not somewhat bright, a normal exposure, a darker and, and a really dark exposure, the dark exposure will show the bright thing just fine because it has now toned it down so it gets the detail. The bright exposures will show the, the, um, the shadows much better and you can combine those and these programs figure out what is the best information that you're gonna see and puts them all in one photo. All right, this is an HDR photo as well. It looks quite natural, all right? It looks pretty good. Um, you can kind of get away with this in RAW just with one file because if you swing your, your highlights and your shadows strongly in both directions, you get an HDR type look. It doesn't look quite as natural as actually doing it, but do note with, because there's all that information in that RAW file, you can get away with it. Um, but don't overdo it. 
you can make weird, crazy things. All right, this is like Louise. Doesn't look like like Louise, right? That's that's an overdone HDR. All right, so <laughs> this guy is really cool. This guy is very cool. Um, but I, I think there is, oh, maybe I selectively edited out the canoers um, going around. But just, so if you see pictures like that, that's HDR. But do remember that that's HDR as well. Alan Dyer has done a number of HDR too. And it, you're trying to figure out what, does, what did you actually see there. All right. Okay, so this is the last section, general photography um, guidelines. Go to interesting places. If you want to get great photos, you have to go out. You have to go explore good places, all right? You took all, you I, were? I took all these photos, yeah. Oh, that that was Trooping the Color. That wasn't the wedding. That was like a couple months after the wedding. But that's, yeah, Kate and Harry. That's a bird that speared a fish. Um, oh. How did you get that? Like, that happens very quickly. Yeah. I was in the right place. And that was in South Africa. So. You still, you still, you're in the right place. <laughs> Lighting, lighting, lighting. So the morning and evening are great for lighting, all right? Middle of the day is not. There is a nice glow here. Did I Photoshop and add that glow? No, that was, that was how it looked, all right? That was morning. That was like six in the morning. Uh, just, just down the, no, <laughs> just down the road here. <laughs> Um, people photos. These are, this is kind of the, the non-astronomy photo guidelines. Don't cut off just their feet, all right? I've seen so many people who do group photos and they cut their feet like right at the, the shins. Don't do that. Either grab their whole feet or grab their torso, but, but don't just cut their feet off. Be sure to use a telephoto, not a wide angle lens. If you're taking a shot of a, a person with a wide angle, if you crank it to 24 and take it, there's a weird effect that makes people's face look fat all right and yeah so the farther out in fact the 85 millimeter lens that you have is great for photos for people photos so if you're doing portraits use try and zoom in as much as you can if you have enough space to back up like go back up all right um don't try to capture everything in the same photo zoom in Capture a moment, capture like an upper, like don't, don't try and get the whole group. Focus, try and figure out what you're taking a photo of, all right? So, um, use a non-distracting background if you can. Try, like consider putting up a white or black sheet if you don't have a special one, or even just a regular pattern surface. Don't, as like even trees, if you're taking a picture of someone with a lake behind them, it starts actually getting distracting unless you can blur that lake more, okay? So find something that is a little bit, you want to see the person, not the background. Thanks. So that's a friend's kid from down in Arizona. Let's do this. All right, watch out for harsh shadows as well. Um, overcast days, as much as people don't realize it, are much better for family photos or group photos than bright days. Um, because people aren't squinting and there's not going to be the big dark difference between the dark eyes and the bright forehead. Um, I mean, you can get some good lighting. This is in the evening here. It was actually a backlit shot. But um, I, I, the camera, do you know, for this shot here, the camera tried to expose it a lot darker. They wanted the family yeah. dark because, because it's so light much is light is coming out. But I knew what to do. I increased that meter the, with my wheel in the back. I got an overexposed shot, and they came out perfect. All right? Um, and pay attention to people who are squinting. Um, so many people do that outside. Just, just like relax, relax. Um, and I think this is the last uh, people photo. Try avoid sharpening the skin. I already said that. Um, even consider smoothing it. You don't want to see people's wrinkles. All right? Um, nighttime photography, add a foreground. It adds so much to it, all right? Um, if you're going to do star trails, it's nice to see star trails up there. But if you get something, an object in front, it adds so much to a photo. Um, and try taking many shots in a sequence. You might be able to stack them and make the noise go off, or you might catch a nice meteorite right through uh, the clouds. So. 
All right, rule of thirds. Some people have heard of the rule of